here today on Terry Ives's farm in Guilford, New York, and we're going to be discussing how uh, to establish and maintain grass and legume seedings for grazing dairy cows. Uh, this coincidentally has been an extremely dry year, so some of the grasses we're going to be looking at are suffering from some drought stress. But uh, the, the principles that we're going to be talking about can apply equally well to uh, beef cattle, sheep, or any, any class of livestock. So uh, Terry, this is Terry Ives here. Uh, how, how many cows do you milk on the farm here? We're a 90 cow herd. We're milking cow herd. 80 through the parlor right now. Mm -hmm. We've got another 70 head of young stock. And so does everything get grazed at one time or another? Um, as they get, the older heifers get grazed, the young ones do not get grazed. The cows are out to pasture, but they also have access to a freestall barn for these hot days. They've been staying in the barn. Right, it's been very yep. unusually warm this oh, summer. Oh man. Yes, so, but we do graze, you know, nights, they're out, they're free to come out, and daytime, they stay in generally. Mm -hmm. Now, in when you establish uh, a mix of species for your uh, animals, do you, you know, plant, uh, you try to get both legumes and grasses? Yes, legume makes a great renovator. Um, it helps put a little nitrogen in the soil for the grasses, mm -hmm. and the cows love the legumes, so. We use the legumes, and I got a mix from local supplier mm -hmm. when I seeded this down. You see, three years ago, or actually four years ago, it was corn, mm -hmm. and then three years ago we seeded it down, and you know we worked it up, did tillage and everything for it, just to smooth it up because I like my fields smooth, right? Pasture so, smooth, so you can mow them. So, in establishing and maintaining pastures, we can run the gamut from full tillage, which would involve plowing, disking, uh, dragging, and cultipacking, all the way to the other end, which would be other extreme, which would be frost seeding, where you're just broadcasting seed right. on it at a certain time right. of year. Yeah, we have done some frost seeding. In fact, this spring I came in and did a little frost seeding on this. And last year we grazed it too heavy in the fall, and it was a little bit on the thin side. And I thought that would just renovate it a little bit, rejuvenate it, and so I got a mix from a local supplier and... What species were in that mix? Well, um, the, it had 30% duo festo, festoleum. Festoleum. Yep. 25% uh, perennial rye grass, 20% orchard grass, 15% Italian rye grass, and 10% Jumbo legume or jumbo ladino clover. Ladino clover, yes. which is a white clover. Right. right. And so. so and that's what we used for a renovator and the conditions this spring weren't exactly ideal to really get it going. We got It was too, pretty dry. We earlier. got too dry and then we didn't mm. get the frost to mm. break up and work the seed mm. into the soil. So Now was this field here originally did you do full tillage on this field? Yes, we did full tillage on this field after it was corn. So you gave us a list there uh, of species uh, any uh, other clovers besides white clover you like? Uh mostly white clovers white all clover. we've used and our ground seems to have a natural supply mm -hmm. of white clover in. So we do get that naturally. Now we got to talk a lot about uh, the soil pH and the fruit fertility. You know, soil pH is you know, typically you have to add uh, lime to bring up your calcium and magnesium mm -hmm. level. What soil pH do you typically try to bring your soils up to? We like to get them up to at least a 6.5, 6.7 mm -hmm. in order to maintain the right. optimum yields and we've hauled lime in through the years and spread quite a little lime through all of our pastures and fields. And, and some some fields sometimes that are so acid uh, uh, it's recommended generally you not add more than like three tons per mm -hmm. acre per application and you might have to end up doing more than one application over Usually a of Usually it's time. two ton of the acre that two you ton. add and then you come back in if you need more you know in the fall or even the next year and add more. Now the lime you used uh, do you recall what the equivalent neutralizing value of it is, like 75, 80 percent? I do not. It comes out of Ariscony. Ariscony, so that's yep. I, that's about 80 yep. percent. 80 percent, yeah. Yep. yeah. So that so. means whatever the lime requirement is, let's say you needed three tons of the acre of 100 percent lime, you'd have to divide three by 0.8 to get three and a half tons yep. to get to the desired level, if that's yep. what you wanted. Yes. 
Now, um, typically, uh, what kind of fertilizers do you spread? Do you spread any, uh, like, purchase fertilizers in addition to manure? If we're spreading purchase fertilizer in the pasture, it's generally just nitrogen. Nitrogen, right. And we take, and top, or, you know, broadcast that on mm -hmm. in the spring. And, in the spring? Yeah. Uh, typically, how many pounds of that do you need? Well, generally, about 70 pounds is all we've Of spread. actual nitrogen? Of, yeah. uh, n no, 70 pounds of urea, which of urea, is 46%. Which 46%, yeah. okay. Right. And, you know, sometimes up to 100 pounds. Right. When you do new seeding, about how many pounds of seed per acre do you try to get on of your legumes and grasses? Look, of a seed mix, we're generally trying to get 15 to 20 pounds per acre, per acre. of seed. So now, that would be with full tillage. Now, have you ever tried no-tilling out here? No, we haven't. We haven't tried a no-till in... For hay, mm -hmm. we've done no-till for corn, but right. not in the hay. So now, if you were doing a frost seed, which you would do, what, typically in March, you would in come March, out and broadcast yes. yeah. And the idea there is that the the, the uh, freezing and thawing of the soil will cause the soil to crack, and the seed will uh, go into the ground that way. Mm -hmm. That's what would be happening in a natural situation, like how, how seeds would take out in a forest or woodland setting. And we try to mimic that with the frost seeding. How many pounds of the acre do you do then? When I did the frost seeding this spring, I was putting down 10, 12 pounds of the acre. And so you broadcast yep. that? I with broadcast a, that with a spinner spreader a on the back spreader. of a okay. small light tractor. Right. And generally, probably if you wanted to establish a brand new pasture, you would probably go more to conventional tillage and the frost seeding you're yes. trying to improve yes. yep. an existing Just side. to mm -hmm. improve, a, renovate a, an existing pasture. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the pastures we got over on the side here haven't been seeded in years. They've been pasture for almost as long as I can remember. And those are pretty steep slopes, yeah, too. Those are 15% or more slopes. Yes, yeah. they are. Well, that's one of the beauties of, of grazing is that we can utilize land that's that steep that would mm -hmm. be all but impossible to grow uh, row crops and do conventional tillage on. Now, if you do a, a new seeding, do you use a grain drill with a seeder on it, or do you have a like a, a cultivator type seeder? I have a grain drill that I use for my seedings. Mm -hmm. it's, the one problem I had with it is I couldn't run some of the fescue seed uh -huh. through the drill itself. I had to actually come back and broadcast that. Now, do you ever spread any additional fertilizers, such as phosphorus and potassium, or do you use mostly just cow manure for that? I have not. Uh, we could, but we haven't done any additional fertilizer. Mm -hmm. You know, just let the manure. Take well, I out. see you have a manure lagoon over there, so yes, you we must. Do. You have a ready source of fertilizer elements from that. And so. we have spread the pastures with lagoon manure. Mm -hmm. So. Now, how often do you test your soils for pH and fertility? Every two to three years. Good, it's okay. not yearly, but every two mm -hmm. to three years we've tested for nutrients and try to match up and. And these soils here in Chenango County would almost always, if you don't maintain the pH, they're going to they're gonna need some lime They're going to need lime, yes. Right. We're a deficient area, and yes. as you add manure, you drag down your pH. So when do you decide if a pasture needs to be renovated? We, we work them up because they're rough. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's uh, weed control. You know, you've got weed some control, yeah. issues with weeds and, you know, a little Roundup. We'll take care of the weeds and mm -hmm. then seed down and it'll mm -hmm. stay free for quite a while. Right. And um, typically, you can grow orchard grass, timothy, smooth brown grass. And then on the legume side, you uh, alfalfa, white clover, red clover. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what species seem to work best for you here? Orchard grass grows naturally. Mm -hmm. You'll get that coming in quite regularly. Uh, timothy, we've seeded in because. We've always liked a Timothy mix. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, your brome grasses, I haven't looked as much at them for brome grass or rye grass, but orchard grass is the one that just comes in naturally. Right. And you get a lot of growth if it's kept mm -hmm. cut early. So. And it heads out very early, too. Yes, it does. Okay. So you got to get, get on it in May almost to yeah. start. Yeah. Yeah. And so you really have to match the species to your specific site. You can't depend on a, a shotgun approach of buying a certain mix. It's not going to work on all fields on any, any given property. You really no. You got to match the species uh, to the compatibility of the soil. Right. Well, we've uh, discussed uh, a variety of topics here: the the soil fertility, the liming, 
to counteract acidity, uh, the types of machines that you might use in conventional tillage as compared to uh, minimum till or no till and frost seeding. And so, um, well, thank you, Terry. And we've, uh, you've answered a lot of questions and we hope that this will be uh, provide information to uh, a variety of people out there looking to improve their grazing situations.